Hello, we are Group Four, and our topic is Internet of Trust: Reduce the Perception of Anonymity in Cyberbullying. And now,、uh, I'll introduce our theory part.、Uh, first is Internet of Trust. We chose Internet of Trust as our issue, and we found cyberbullying might be one of reasons cause distrust on the internet, which turns internet users into both potential victims and bullies. And second part is cyberbullying. Cyberbullying now actually is changing with time and structure of social media. In the past, the structure of social media is normal group chat; people are more close in a group. But at present, due to the public chat, people have distance even though they are associated. Cyberbullying also becomes increasingly normal at present. Roles in cyberbullying usually define a victim, bully, bystander, and upstander. Victim refers to the person who is suffering from the bully. Bully is the person who is doing the problem or being mean. Bystander is the person who sees the bully's plan, and on the contrary, upstander is the person who digs who sticks up for the victim and tries to scare the bully. Group conformity will turn individuals with no harm into bullies. Bystander effect means individuals are less likely to help a victim when there are other people present. And it could make a difference between bystander and upstander. And the most important one, anonymity. It will make bullies worse and victims fair. So we chose anonymity as our point cut. And the third part is anonymity. On one hand, anonymity can also reduce perceived control of victims and let victims think there are potential bullies everywhere. On the other hand, due to anonymity. Bullies don't think twice before acting and not responsible for their actions. Much worse, bullies' behavior and identity tend to be dissociated from what they do in real life. In fact, while there are many ways to manage the situation once the damage has already been done, presently there are few reliable ways to prevent cyberbullying from happening. So we decide to tackle cyberbullying from the bully's angle. In terms of privacy, anonymity can't be eliminated. Thus, we focus on reducing bullies' perception of anonymity. And finally, is our theory summary part. After thorough research and discussion, we finally decided to tackle cyberbullying from the bullies' angle and ascertain our design focus on reducing bullies' perception of anonymity. Uh, in the research section, we adopted many different methods to develop our design di direction. For example, we conducted brainstorming sessions to help us generate design ideas. Everyone came up with many creative points, like encouraging bystanders to intervene, curbing the spread of malicious posts, or reducing police perception of anonymity. After rounds of discussion, we adopted the idea of reducing anonymity. We also used an issue tree to map out various implications of anonymity in cyberbullying.、Uh, when we are considering our design ideas, we found one paper talking about the concept of reflective interfaces. Reflective interfaces encourage users to think about possible choices they can make and consequences of their interactions for themselves and others. By putting users in the reflective state. Reflective interfaces can help them self-correct toward positive behavioral norms. This paper inspired us as we think we can create an interface to let bullies rethink their behaviors. The way we reduce bullies' perception of anonymity is to reinforce bullies' awareness of their real identity. If we can inform internet users、uh, that they are not as anonymous as they thought and show them evidence of their real existence. We believe bullies will think twice before posting unkind messages. In the paper written by Gary T. Marks from MIT, we found seven identity knowledge to identify a person online. We plan to use three checkpoints to serve as three levels of identification to remind bullies of their real identity, and each checkpoint will be displayed on every single piece of mirror. The specific content of each checkpoint is developed from the seven identity knowledge, and we finally chose IP address, online preferences, and voice to serve as three checkpoints. IP address can remind users of where they are, 
preferences can display what their online history looks like so that they know their online behaviors will leave traces. And voice can strengthen users' perception of their real of their own physical characteristics. The reason why we use mirrors to construct our reflective interface is that everyone is familiar with mirrors in their daily lives by displaying users' faces in mirrors. We can easily drag them from the online world back to reality, from the dissociative self back to the real self. Our inspiration also partly came from the mirror test, which is a behavioral technique developing, uh, developed in 1970 by American psychologist Gordon Gallup. It aims to determine whether animals are able to identify themselves in front of a mirror. We think it might be interesting to let potential bullies to participate in this kind of test. We chose eyes, nose, and mouth as different facial features because they are three core components of one's face. By showing these facial features, we can quickly strengthen the user's perception of his or her real identity. Here is the research summary page. During the research phase, we decided to combine mirrors with checkpoints to strengthen users' awareness of their real identity. So here comes to the practice part. Our installation is not an actual product because we don't expect bullies will use it. What we expect is that it can enhance everyone's awareness of anonymity of cyberbullying so as to resonate, resonate with everyone on cyberbullying to a certain extent. Therefore, we plan to place the installation in an exhibition to show the whole process of using our installation, we draw a storyboard. And then, let's see the video first. Our installation contains a laptop, a set of mirrors, and a separate enter key. It will be displayed in an exhibition. There will be a staff standing around this device and introducing it to visitors. In this way, visitors who are attracted by the staff's introduction will want to further explore this device. When a user wants to send a malicious message online, the send button is at first disabled. A notification box will pop up after the user clicks the send button. And the user must go through three identification processes before he can send the message. The first mirror will display the user's location information based on his IP address. The user can confirm that by pressing the enter key and then the first mirror will flip to reflect the user's eyes. The second mirror will show the user's preference based on his browsing history and he can press enter key again. Then the second mirror will flip to reflect the user's nose. Following that, the third mirror will show a sentence needed the user to read by himself to confirm his voice. Then he need to press the enter key once again, and the third mirror will flip to show the user's mouse. Finally, the whole face will be shown on those mirrors. After the identification, the send button will be able to as a result, the user might think he should take more responsibility for what he posts online, and he can decide to delete or modify the text to send. By guiding users to use this device can strengthen their perception of the real identification, we aim to reduce users' perception of anonymity online to reduce incidents of cyberbullying. So it's our video. Our and now let's focus on how to make our installation. First, there are some key components of the installation. We use the front of the mirror to show the human face to give a sense of reality. We use the back of the mirror to present the checking points to connect the person to the real life. We also need to have an enter button to control it. Next, it involves how to order the mirrors. We have a discussion and finally choose the right order here, one right mirror in a line and three mirrors in total. We choose it because the last pieces of mirror we have, the less difficult to make them flat after flipping. 
Then it involves how to flip the mirror. We have two plans here. One is we pull the mirror with a gear drive system and we make a proper type to test it. The other one is that we directly rotate the mirror with servo motor. And we also use Anjuno to build it and test the servo motor. From Mark's suggestion, we use the second plane at last because it's difficult for us to do to design the gear drive system. It, it also involves how to hold our mirror. By the help of Mark, we know that we need to have a frame to hold it. So we measure the size of each component and design the frame. We draw it in AI and cut it in the laser cutter in the studio. Finally, we connect each part with glue. And here is our overview with you for the installation. And we also debug the software and hardware to let our installation work normally. Then we shoot the video and edit and edit it. We add the three check points through the video effect. We also have some future development. Firstly, we plan to hold an exhibition on cyberbullying and put our installation in it for people to use. So the process design of our exhibition is still needs to be improved. Secondly, now the identification system is a mock version. We hope to develop our own specific identification system of three checkpoints to put it into real user usage scenarios. There is our practice summary. We made an installation for exhibition and want to use it to raise everyone's awareness of the enormity in cyberbullying. Thank you. Hope you like our project. Thank you.